Hello, I'm Linda Ann Smith, video creator for Color Art. I'm painting an angel with a peace dove today. To create a similar composition, you will need the following color art materials. Radiant Gels Dimensional Paint in the following colors, Twilight, Indian Copper, Snapdragon, Stargazer, Blue Pearl, Primary Elements Clear Glaze Medium, Primary Elements Artist Pigments in these colors, Solar Gold, Emperor's Gold, Lemon Drop, and Burnt Umber. I also use the Solar Gold in the premixed Silks Acrylic Glaze. You will also need these materials. Artist Loft 12 inch by 12 inch canvas board, Deco Art Stencils, Belief, and Spirited. Flat acrylic paints in these colors, blue, red, and buff, a very fine tipped permanent ink artist marker, and an acrylic sealer or varnish. I begin with a sketch of an angel. I do most of my drawing when I'm away from the studio, usually when it's downtime at an event or when I'm waiting on an appointment. I want some texture in this painting, so I'm going to use this area right here to make her collar. I like to use joint compound for texture. You can buy it at any hardware store and it just it works better for me. I'm going to get started with the joint compound. It's easier for me to work it from a flat surface with a palette knife, so I'm putting some out on a paper plate. And today I'm going to experiment a little bit by adding a little primary elements from the solar gold color um, to my joint compound. I'm mixing it up. Uh, my joint compound's a little bit thick. I'll probably have to add some water here. But anytime you add any of the color art products that have mica in them to something that is opaque like joint compound, it's going to dry white instead of clear, then you're going to lose your mica. I'm aware of that. So this isn't making as much color as I expected it to. I'll try adding a bit more. I'm always willing to play and discover. One of the hardest things I found when I taught uh, science and we had science fairs was the kids would uh, form their hypothesis and write it down and then they'd do their experiment and it didn't always turn out like they expected and so they thought they had failed. They didn't realize that the science experiment was the discovery process. Okay, I'm going to try adding just a little bit of Emperor's Gold and see if that brings it to a deeper, richer, goldish color. When I add this, if it turns into that rich color, uh, so be it. Great. But if it doesn't, then I haven't failed, like the hy not proving my hypothesis. I've just learned what it does do. This stencil needs to go between her shoulders to make her collar. And I didn't mask off the areas that I don't want. If I get some of the joint compound over in the areas that I don't, where I don't want it, I'll just scrape it off. And the results, yes, I did get some where I don't want it. So all I have to do is take my palette knife or a, even a uh, paper towel and just wipe off the areas that I don't want. It leaves a little stain but I can take care of that with some white gesso. Notice that it did turn out to be a gold color, the joint compound did, but it took so much of my pigment that I don't think I want to do that again, at least not with the gold colors. I might try other colors in the future. While that area dries, I'm gonna pull my stencil over to the side and start uh, putting in some textured stars in the background behind my angel. And see, there's some extra areas, and I just wiped it away with paper towel this time. I'm using the same stencil, but I'm going to turn it in different directions, and sometimes flip it over, and other times I will um, only use part of the stars so that I don't get a pattern, a repetitive pattern. I want these stars to be random. I'm trying to make sure that I don't uh, place the stencil on top of some of the wet stars that I already have or on top of her collar because it's still wet. But it doesn't take this joint compound very long to dry, which is another reason I like using it. I can take a heat gun to it and it's it's dry and nothing flat. See that little area there where I need to scrape off? Whish, it's gone. It's possible that I won't be able to fill in all the stars until some of them dry. So I'll just turn this and lift the edge 
I actually dried some of this a little bit with a heat gun, so I think I'm okay to put the stencil down on top here. Now this is some part of my angel's um, composition, but here's what I do when I have leftover like putty or paint or anything. Uh, I just add it to another canvas. I usually work on more than one canvas at a time. That's the reason a lot of times I have to edit my uh, videos is because I'm working on two, maybe three canvases at one time. So this is left over, and my experiment on this particular canvas, this little steampunk canvas, this is a, a stencil by um, Andy Skinner from Deco Art, and I, my experiment here is I'm going to just put everything for the next few days that I have left over on this 12 by 12 inch um, canvas board. This joint compound was left over from the Angel and I'm not about to waste it. And sometime in the future you'll probably see a very uh, sketchy video about this canvas. Going back to my Angel, I have some white gesso that I'm going to clean up some of the areas with, kind of paint in things where I smeared and painted under. The nice thing about white gesso is I can still see through it uh, if I don't put it too thick. I can see through it to see my lines in my sketch, and I don't want to lose those lines. But I do want them to be very pale, so that's another reason I'm putting the gesso on. This was a pre-gesso canvas, but uh, another layer of gesso never hurts. This is an ongoing process that I'll be doing every once in a while. Every time I make a smear, I'll come back and fix it with gesso. When you make a mistake, you don't have to throw the canvas away. Uh, just learn to fix it or change it. Okay, we'll go to a little color theory now. You're always hearing don't mix colors that are straight across from each other on the color wheel because you're going to get mud. Well, that might be true if you mix equal amounts. But if you're trying to tone down a color, like I was trying to tone down the twilight color, I didn't want it a bright blue. So I used Indian Copper, which is kind of an orangish color, uh, and mixed with it, and I didn't mix them in equal amounts. I just used it to tone down the blues that were very bright in the twilight color. You can get a lot of mileage out of uh, just a few paints if you know your color theory. You can see here that I'm getting a lot of uh, variegation in the colors, and that's really what I wanted in this nighttime sky. I wanted it to be interesting. I decided to go over on top of the stars. I was kind of avoiding them at first, but I decided that going on top of them, later I can come back and hit them maybe with some of that, uh, some of the Indian copper that I mixed with the twilight, or perhaps another color, maybe a solar gold, an emperor's gold. I'm not sure yet what I want to do with the stars. But I do know that I want a dark background and I don't want to waste time going around each individual star. And another possibility is I don't have to highlight those stars at all. They're in the background and um, it's picking up the paint, the joint compound's picking up the paint differently than the gessoed canvas. So I might not have to do anything to them at all. I will probably make many layers of this paint color in the background. Um, I might even do a layer of the twilight and a layer of the uh, Indian copper without mixing them. When you let layers dry in between coats, it doesn't create mud either. I'll also point out that on my little fancy palette here, I didn't necessarily mix the colors together well. I knew that in some places I would want more blue and in some places I would want less blue. I want a variegated background so that it will look kind of uh, like a galaxy. My first layer's dry now, so let's play with some of that layering. I'm, I'm coming back in with some of the uh, Indian copper color going over what was already there. Because in some areas I feel like I let my uh, paint mixture go a little bit too much towards the twilight, towards the brighter blue. So I'm just coming back. I'm just doing more. Just layer upon layer upon layer makes it rich and pretty. 
sometimes when you're in the mode of creativity, you just kind of forget everything. And that little tiny brush really wasn't covering much area. It was helping me get around the details of the angel, but it wasn't helping me much in covering the canvas quickly. So I switched to this, this fan brush because I know that a fan brush is not going to give me um, solid coverage. I don't want solid coverage. I want this to sparkle with two different colors, with the copper, with the Indian copper, and with the twilight color. After adding about three layers, I'm getting much closer to that deep, rich, uh, darker background color that I want. I want the background color to be dark so that the angel will come forward. I also am going to make her hair somewhat dark uh, because she has a halo in it, and I want that to sparkle. So you have to think again about your lights against your darks as you're painting. I won't go as dark in her hair as I have with this background, but with the shimmery colors, it depends on which way you turn the canvas as to whether they're light or dark sometimes anyway. One of the things that I forgot to mention earlier is that these are dimensional paints that I'm using, and I didn't really want too much dimensional paint in here, so I have thinned them down with a little bit of medium, uh, the primary elements medium, and a little bit of water. To prevent flaking, it's better to add medium than water. So I turned a dimensional paint into just a regular uh, shimmering acrylic paint. Most of the edges in this painting are what you call hard edge, uh, but I will have some softer edges when I get to her face. The soft edges are made by combining wet into wet by putting uh, a wet layer into a wet layer of paint and letting them uh, smooth out together. Sometimes you use a brush to do that. Sometimes, like in watercolor, you just let them flow together. But it's good to have both kinds of edges in a painting. You really need to watch your edges. You need to watch where they come together. You need to watch um, how the colors join and uh, once I learned that in painting, about watching my edges, my paintings drastically improved. I'm going around the edges now and in between some of the stars with Snapdragon. And just like the other paints, I've uh, made this thinner so that it's not a dimensional paint anymore. And I really like the way these are combining and, and I, I like it. I like the background. And now I'm going to use Lemon Drop Primary Elements and Burnt Umber Primary Elements to mix with the Clear Glaze Medium. I'm making quite a mess out of this palette, but I'll have both of these colors uh, mixed and ready and available to work with. I'm starting with a layer of Lemon Drop, which is a very light, lovely yellow. Um, but I'm wanting that halo to show up, so I know that I'm going to be darkening this later with another color, and I'll try the burnt umber and see what happens. Okay, hair's done, but here's a little surprise I didn't really expect. When I mixed the lemon yellow with the burnt umber color, I got a greenish tint. I don't think I was aware from painting with other kinds of paints that burnt umber had so much blue in it, because... The blue and the yellow, it obviously has to have blue because the blue and the ye yellow went together and made the greenish tint. But I think I can use this for darkening around her face. I'm going to go ahead with it because it darkens the hair. And if I don't like it, I'll gesso over it and fix it later. We'll see what happens. Here's my little green-haired angel, but I think she's going to work out just fine because I'm going to add some of the primary elements solar gold to her hair. And this is what it looks like once the solar gold was added. Much happier with it, but still it's a little too light to make that halo really glow when I add the gold there. I'm afraid that two golds together won't make the halo very important. So I'm going to darken it. To let her hair dry a bit, I've moved away from it and I'm going to fill in the dress with stargazer silks. When you're using silks, you need to remember that they're a glaze. They're see-through. So 
in order to get the color down here on her dress that I want, it's going to take several cuts. And right now it looks kind of splotchy, but as I work on it, it will look better. Because I'm going to add several layers to this as it dries. As I put the neck on it, formed a little collar around her neck, which I don't think you can see very well right here, but I think later on you'll be able to see it. And I really liked where that thickness uh, built up around her neck. If you aren't willing to paint dangerously, you might want to put a color under the dress uh, before you glaze over it with this blue. I paint dangerously. So I'm going to use some Blue Pearls Silks Acrylic Glazes. Uh, this is really a cool, a cool glaze, but again, it's transparent. But I'm going to mix it right in with this wet uh, Stargazer color. And as I brush over this, what I'm trying to achieve is that it would show little folds um, that the, the lines that it leaves in not uh, going down in a smooth, flat, opaque surface would appear to be little folds in her gown. One of the advantages of using acrylic paint is that they dry very, very fast, and especially these uh, color art products seem to. So I can let the gown dry and the hair is ready now for some more work. So I'm going back up to the hair and I'm going to add something to give her a little bit of a redheaded touch. Because if I add some of the copper from the background that I put in, that'll give it a wholeness, uh, a feeling of holding together. So I'm going back to this Indian copper and I'm going to add some touches of the Indian copper into her hair. Did I mention that I come from a redheaded family and I've always wished that I had red hair, just doesn't work for me. Not only does this darken the hair, but it gives it another layer of color, and uh, I'm not too unhappy with that green shadow around her face now. It doesn't, it's probably not the best choice. I might make another choice next time, but it, it works. It's gonna be okay. I don't think you're gonna notice any green on it when I get finished. When I finish this, I'll add another stargazer uh, layer to her dress, and then I'll start her face tones. Now, I'm not going to use shimmery paint for her face. I'm going to use just uh, regular acrylic paints, and I've found that if I mix some yellow with some red and add to that either a buff or a whitish color, but I come up with a skin tone that I can work with. I want her skin tone to be very, very pale. So I'm mixing a very pale color, and it wasn't quite pale enough for me, so I went back and mixed a little bit more of the buff in. And I'll paint over her entire face with this color. And then I'll move down to the hands and work on them. The more color I put around the um, dove, the more it's going to show up. And here I'm adding even another layer of the Stargazer. I'll have a lot of layers of Stargazer on her dress before I finish. Her face dried in the time that I used to fill in the Stargazer on her dress. And so now I mixed even a lighter buff color uh, with that same group of paints to make the forehead and the nose bring out the cheeks a little bit. I'll add a little rouge. I'll add a little more pink to this color to add a little rouge to her face and her face will look almost finished. I'm going in now with just light touches of the Stargazer color to accent her eyes and nose area. I mentioned earlier that I'd be adding rouge to her face, and what I'm going to do is get some of the glaze medium and put on her cheeks before I add any color. And that's what I'm doing uh, right here. Using two of the colors that I mixed for her skin tones, I used a very small amount of red and a very a larger amount of the buff color to make a really soft pink. 
I just want a tint on her cheeks. And this is going right into that uh, still wet glaze medium. Doing it this way, putting it into the wet glaze medium gives me soft edges. But when I get to the lips, I'm not particularly care I don't particularly care for the soft edges, so I'm not going to put the glaze medium on her lips first. I'm just going to put very soft colors here. And I tone it in between her lips with just a little bit of blue to cast a shadow. Now I'm hitting the bird wings, well the entire bird actually, with uh, some more of the white gesso to really make that uh, a stark different color from the background. Note here that I went over her neck with a stargazer layer, only one layer, so it would be very subtle. The reason for this was to push the face forward and the neck backwards. I'm using a permanent ink uh, artist pen to give the, the composition the finest details. Details that I probably couldn't get with paint. I might not be able to make these fine lines. I don't want this to be a, a big part of my composition. I just want to outline and define some areas. In reevaluating the painting, I decided at this point to omit the olive branch that was in the dove's beak. I felt like the composition spoke for itself about peace without adding another symbol. Also, please note that the paint was completely dry before I started uh, using the ink. I don't want to get paint clogged into my pens, so always make sure that they're perfectly dry before you start using them on top of paint. Now I'm using the Blue Pearls Radiant Gels uh, to paint in the Dove. If I left him that flat white gesso, he didn't look like he was part of the composition that belonged there. He needed some shimmer to make him come alive with the rest of the painting. It's possible I could have painted him a flat color like I did her face, but this seemed to be the right choice. To embellish the angel's garment, I opted to use the Silks Acrylic Glaze because in, uh, it's also in the Solar Gold, and I'm not mixing it myself because this is already mixed perfectly. It's, it's going to leave um, a shimmer of gold that I can still kind of see through to give it that angelic look. Once I finish the collar, I go to her sleeves and add some embellishment of gold there also. Some of the last little touch-ups include going back to her hair and adding some little curls uh, defining some of the curls that are already there. And when that's finished, I'm back to the solar gold because I want to uh, put that solar gold right over the white this time. I think that the this solar gold in the Silks Acrylic Glaze will cause her halo to be much lighter since I'm putting it over white. Maybe not much lighter, but somewhat lighter and give it that extra sparkle that I want for the halo. And now I'm really happy with the decision I made to use uh, the solar gold on, in her halo and to darken her hair a little bit as I did earlier because this is just exactly what I want. Another decision I made at this point after painting the solar gold into the halo was that I didn't want to do something different to the background stars. I like them just as they are. They show up, but they don't take over the composition. If you'd like to see more of my videos, I'd appreciate it if you would reach down to the bottom and hit the subscribe button. Also, the thumbs up button is there. Uh, I'd appreciate any comments or sharing that you do of this video. Be sure to go to colorart.com where there's blogs and products and they have something new on their blog every single day. I'll list both my channel and the Color Art channel in the comments below the video. Thank you for watching.